When I'm gone, I want you to leave. I'm part of uh, Ms. Rachel's anthropology class. Uh, this semester we've been studying uh, public culture through the context of New Orleans. And in particular, we've been looking at like the interplays and intersections between the public and the private sectors. And Holt is definitely an uh, interesting example of those intersections. Uh, each one of us has created an installation back here uh, that's the result of our uh, individual research into Holt Cemetery uh, over the semester. So uh, thank you all for coming. <laughs> thank you. The purpose that I'm here today, which we call Hope Cemetery, is to come out to see about how can we do the improvement of this cemetery, which my family has been buried here since the late 40s or early 50s. And we have several great family members, great here, and it's the only place that at that time that they can come because of the, the cost of the funeral. Praise the Lord, everybody. Because he's worthy to be praised. Mm -hmm. The scriptures say, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Truly, I thank the God for this opportunity just to be found among you. I love the cemetery. I spent 50 years of my life in the city of New Orleans Cemetery. Mm -hmm. I retired in 2018, but yet I still come and do a little work around the cemetery. This afternoon, the body is a little weak, but I'm here. Amen. I suffer with prostate cancer and I take all chemo treatment, and every now and then it makes my body weak. But I'm determined to run the race. I'm determined to see what the end going to be. Yes, yes. And I'm grateful to Miss Rachel for this opportunity. Just remembering what work we've done in these cemeteries. But yet we got a better job what we're trying to do. I thank some of my co-workers, Mr. Suley, Mr. Mike Cooper, he's over there. He wanted the cemetery attendant that I turned the cemetery over to him. And Mr. Nick, Mr. Nick is not here today, but they're trying to do a job that I didn't complete. We ask God blessing on you, you, and you, that you continue coming out, fellowship with us. 
I want to thank you for your service. I want to thank you, and I want to pay homage to all you've done in these cemeteries. The living thank you, the dead thank you. And we are a very powerful body of people. When we put our collective energy together, we can send him energy. Yeah, man. And we can give him power today. I want you to know what you made of, people. That's right. We can change everything. Oh, yeah. By just believing, by having Greetings. Greetings. I shall be speaking for my chief. He's had death in his family, and we respect death as we respect life. Life is just as important as death. It is a path that we all must take. We must travel through life. We must travel through them. Blessing is something that comes to children and family. Respect your family as you respect life. must come. As we are here now, we shall be here again. Thank you. 
You know, creating these altars have taught me empathy, acceptance, no judgment, and peace. And even though I'm, I'm crying, it's just, I feel at peace. And I, I feel more of like knowing that he's okay and that he's not suffering anymore. For us to come together and, you know, do that for the community, it was like really needed. And it just like reminded me like New Orleans is such a beautiful city and it's been through a lot. And like the cemetery, it's been through a lot. But I feel like in the end, we always gonna like come together and you know produce something beautiful. Like through the struggle. <laughs> I kind of had like a moment of like culture shock like you were talking about when the spirit of Fai'i started like dancing through the graves and everything but then like once I got past that I just realized like that's his way of you know connecting with that energy. impression upon seeing the overfilled graveyard with handmade headstones and the tall mounds of freshly dug ground atop the resting places of new arrivals, it seemed like a, cutter, a cluttered place to spend one's eternity. However, the conversations I heard and overheard today from those personally connected to this cemetery has enlightened me, and because of the gathering today, I can now see hole through their eyes as well as my own. Everyone kept coming up and we would ask them, do they want their potato salad in it, in the gumbo or on the side? And everybody would say, most of the people, you know, I want it in my gumbo, that's like the New Orleans way. I learned that it takes a deeper empathy, a deeper sense of empathy to create an altar for others. I think that the research done for the collages was very important. It's a way to demonstrate that we care, and it's a way to make sure that we are respectful and truthful in the way we portray uh, those loved ones. New Orleans' attitude of living with death and so many like memento mori around the city, we're all you know confronted with it all the time, and so we get used to it in a way that. American culture tends to not do, but Holt doesn't have that, you know. I first time I went to Holt, I think it was 15, so it was like over 30 years ago, and it was more exposed than it is now because, like, the buildings that are between the campus and the graveyard, those buildings weren't there, and so it was much more like you knew it was there, you could see it, and as Delgado grew around it. Um, you know, it's, it's become very closed off, like you don't even know it's there. When I was researching Holt, it was kind of similar, like of course, like we had learned that they didn't want to create another pauper cemetery. City Park tried really, really hard to take control of Holt Cemetery, and they wanted to like dig up the people there and then turn it into literally anything else. Yeah. 